Just a few weeks back, Queef the Lazy Geek said this about the new Antlia SHO 2.8 nanometer ultra series. And for this Neef, they've announced another wallet killer, which is a series of filters, H-alpha, oxygen-3, and uh, sulfur-2, with all of them very high transmission, and it looks like also extremely well-placed flat-top band passes that are 2.8 nanometer wide, even better than the best filters that I've seen in the space. For now, I'm resisting the uh, need to buy those filters, because fortunately, I don't currently have a monochrome camera. Woo, safe. Now I thought, if he passes, then I have to take it up. Even I also don't have a mono setting at the moment. And in the meantime, I realized that Antlia has something else, brand new and really cool. And that is their LRGB R Plus Pro Dark Series. And what this is all about, and how they look inside the boxes, we will see right after the trailer. <laughs> Hey, this is Fear Into Space, I'm Sasha from Switzerland, so grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So the first big news obviously is, I'm going mono. And if you're asking why, then let me give you an advice. There might come a time in your astrophotography career where you feel you have everything almost under control. So from time to time, the system doesn't completely break down and you actually do a good photo. And this, my friends, is not the moment to stop and enjoy life, enjoy the picture. No, no. This is the moment to mess everything up again and do something crazy like going mono. Always challenge yourself. Now, all fun aside, I'm just curious. And I like to explore the whole palette that actually astrophotography has to offer. And so I made the decision that my... ASI 2600 MC will actually go back from my FRA 400 to my CPC 800 and for shooting galaxies, clusters, it's perfect. And on my FRA 400 for the Nebula, I will buy myself a monocam. Now, as you can see, I already have the filters. That's good, but I do not have the camera yet. It's ordered. They say it will take another two to three weeks until it's here. So as soon as it's here, and as there is no cloud in the sky, I will also show you first light with them and my real impressions. And today we will just do the introduction, why I decided to go with Antlia, what's so special about these brand new filters. The new LRGB R Plus series is not even for sale yet. And then we also do, at least for one or two of them, an unboxing. So let's start with why Antlia in the first place. So coming from one shot color, my first filter that I bought was the Antlia ALPT. And it accompanied me for the whole journey of my astrophotography endeavor until now. And I really, really enjoyed it. I liked about everything from the box it came with, from the way it performed, it never let me down. And then there's something else. I really like how Antlia placed itself in the spectrum. And I kind of, with, with all equipment, I like this kind of level. It's above the mainstream, but it's beyond the unreachable, the extremely expensive. So a good example here is my Avalon M0 mount, which yes, it's more expensive than the Sivo mount, but it's also much better quality, but it's still not in the price range of a car, which I could not and I would not spend for a mount. And in the same way, I feel that Antlia is way on top of Optolon, Bader, and so on, but it is way cheaper than Chroma or Astrodon, which might still be justified, obviously, for the prices that they ask, which might still be a little bit better. But again, these will be the price levels, personally, I could not and I would not afford. And what I like also about Antlia is their straightforward communication. And with communication, I do not mean their website. Their website is an absolute mess. A lot of the stuff which you see here in this table is not even really on their website. Or they also have a 2.5 nanometer filter on there, which 
they did not announce. I don't even think it exists. So don't go to their website. Doesn't make any sense at all. But funny enough, they give rather good information on one side to dealers. And on the other side, also in Cloudy Nights, they quite lengthily present their products and also respond to user feedback. And what kind of impressed me was a statement from them that I saw on anginaastro.com. And on top of every filter that they sell, the following is written. Important, please read this important note before buying Antlia narrowband filters. No returns will be accepted for Antlia narrowband filter exhibiting halos around bright stars as disclosed below. And then they go on state that depending on the relative position of the filter and so on and so on and how bright the star is, halos might be happening. And what I really love is they state, if you must ensure there are no detectable halos in your images, you may want to consider Astrodon or Chroma narrowband filters instead. These filters, however, cost two or three times as much as the Antlia filter. And I love that. I mean, it takes a lot that as a dealer, you say, you know, we have a certain level, but we accept that there is something better. And if you need that, please go there. That's for me a great way to communicate. And the halo part is, by the way, something very interesting, I feel. Because, for example, with the CPC 800 and the Antlia ALPT, I had no issues with halos at all. Now, the ones who have seen my first live video with the FRA 400, I had massive halo issues. But okay, this was with Alnitac, so probably most filters have halo problems with this star. But this kind of reflects of all the user feedback you get from people using Antlia filters. A lot of them praising them to the highest, stating they have no issue at all. And then are the people who say, no, actually I sent them back, huge halos. And what it probably really comes to is the imaging train. And I haven't found until now something tangible where someone would actually analyze which conditions, which positions of a filter lead to halos and which not. You know, there's, there's a lot of things which we state, okay, if this happens, you might try that based out of experience. And it would be great if we would actually figure out well, if we have a real big halo problem, we might actually try to move the filter further away from the sensor or closer to the sensor. I don't know, but it looks like we just accept this issue or this deficiency or we just blame it on the filter and, and that's it. So that's just some, some personal remarks. <laughs> so, but let's go now back to these specific filters and have a look what makes them unique. And the first thing which makes Antlia filters absolutely unique is this here. Remember, going back to Queef, where he talks about the filter lottery, because if you buy an Optolong filter or an Ascar filter or a Beta filter, it's a lottery. You might get a good one, you might get a bad one. You don't know. They don't measure each and every filter they produce. Perhaps they measure every hundred, every fifty. We don't know. But there might definitely be filters which are off spec, which are sold. This is not the case with Antlia. For each and every filter they sell, this here is what you get. And these are the individual measurement results from this specific filter. So it is not really possible to get an off spec filter because they would not pass the quality control and they would definitely not send an off-spec filter where this is actually visible. The next thing that I really like, let's just pick now one by random, when we actually unbox them, is the box. And I mean, this is just really cool. This is hard plastic, and it's actually sealed by magnets. And it's closed again. So this is presented like a jewelry. And then if we open it up, there's a thick form in here which protects it. And then below here is the filter. And no, I will not open the filter package up. These are unmounted filters and there will only be one moment where I open these up and that's exactly the moment where I put it in your filter wheel. And at this point, I will show it to you. But one thing is that I learned that 
each and every time you open a filter, there's just an immediate chance that some dust will drop on it or that you even do something stupid and you have a fingerprint on it or so. I want absolutely by all means um, prevent that. So with that, let's look specifically now at these filters. And these three, they are the narrowband filter. So HA, O3, S2, all 2.8 nanometers. So that's the first thing that really sets them apart. And we can also easily see that here with the spectrums, that they're really that narrow. But what is even more important, and I will refer you here to another video, I will put in the description below, of a guy called Dark Sky Geek. So another geek. And this geek has even a better spectrophotometer than Queef. And he looked at certain filters and he figured that actually where the filters usually underperform is the transmission rate. And here with this Antlia Ultra filters, we have extremely high transmission rates of 97% for HA and S2 and of 95% for O3. They're all made of a special O'Hara quartz glass, which gives them extreme durability and also thermal stability. And by the way, when we're talking about transparency, you might actually wonder where I got these filters from, given these ones are not even for sale yet. And yes, obviously I reached out to Aunt Leah, asked them for the filters and they agreed to send them to me. And I don't see the point of these sending for test statements because let's face it, I need the filters. And so why in all the world would I send it back again? So we agreed on a rather small discount that I got for doing the videos, but I didn't have to sign anything. And I think you should know me already well enough that if anything is disturbing me, I will shouting it over the rooftops. So if there will be halos, you will see the halos and I will be upfront with it. And so what I can tell you today is really only what I can read out of their marketing materials. But given my experience with Antlia ALPT, it kind of matches. And I would be surprised if I would experience anything else than what they state. So now with that, let's talk about these here. And I think that's the much more interesting part. Because the story is that when I asked Antlia for the 2.8 nanometer filters, which is what I really wanted. I was like, by the way, I also need, if I go mono some RGB filters, could you also send some over? And I just thought I just sent the regular one. And then they were like, um, so why don't you buy these here? And I wasn't even aware until I got them that they're not for sale yet. And there's also no date when they will go for sale. So I cannot tell you how fast they will be available. All that I know is that I searched the whole internet about them and except of the statement that they sent me about it, I couldn't find anything. So what's so special about them? First of all, they are also out of the same O'Hara quartz glass as the 2.8 nanometer. So also they have an extremely high transmission rate of 95% for the blue filter and of 97% for the rest of them. I also received the same paper as I received for the narrowband filters with the spectrophotometric graphs on it. So they deliver there the same service. But what you might see and what might confuse you is that I hold five filters in my hands. And usually you would only have four. L, R, G, D. E. And that's it. So, so what's this here? And what they deliver is a, what they call R plus filter. And it starts at 700 millimeter and goes down unlimited in the infrared area. So as you can see here in this graph, the rest is standard, even a little bit overlapping as it should be. And the luminance filter goes around D3, the RGB, but it does not include the R plus. And then the R plus solely is responsible for the rest of the spectrum. And what they state, and I quote them, considering the high QE characteristics of the near infrared band of the cameras, Antlia adds the R plus filter, which can capture the details of the near infrared band and enhance the signal to noise ratio and contrast to the image. For some galaxies, 
there are still strong signals in the near infrared band to provide a possibility for lovers who like to explore unknown discoveries in the near infrared band. So I have a lot of questions here. <laughs> when to really use it? How would we color it? Also red? Or do we give it a dedicated color? And if yes, which one? <laughs> so, <laughs> so many questions. And I think that will be the most interesting one to experiment with. And so, yeah, as soon as I have my camera, as soon as I have some clear skies, this will also be something I will be playing with. Will tell you if I feel it makes sense, there's anything decent coming out and being off the lookout of techniques, how we can actually integrate that then in our picture. And it just comes around to what I said at the beginning, you know, as if mono will be not be complex enough. Let's make it a little bit more complex. Could we even integrate that in a narrowband setting that we actually do the SHO plus infrared? Who knows? But it is, it is something interesting, definitely. And by the way, I think that's the last point that I have. What size did I take? I did take this 36 millimeters on frame one. Until now, for the one shot color, I used two inch um, mounted filters, but I read now all over that for anything below full frame, the 36 millimeters um, unmounted are more than enough big. And it obviously makes a massive difference from a price point of view. So that was it. If you want to know anything in addition about these filters, please ask in the comments. If you know any good documentation, tutorial, video, whatever about halos, how they are created, what criteria mitigates them or increases them or whatever, please, please, please leave it in the comments below. It's a topic I'm really interested in. And if I ever have enough information about it, I would like to do a dedicated video because I feel that is still a mystery we should all together explore. And if you want to hear more bits and pieces about my mono journey and be the first to hear and also support the channel, please have a look at my Patreon community. Link is also in the description below. See you next time and clear skies.